Hello and welcome to a new video about control engineering. This time we're going to talk about the next pure element. Huh? So we had already a P element, proportional element, we had an integrational element or integrating element and the counterpart of an integrating element or if you see it mathematically the counterpart is a derivation. Huh? And this is exactly the third pure element. These are the three what I call pure elements, yeah, whatever pure is. Yeah, so this is the third of these elements. Yeah? And I can tell you, like I've already mentioned in the other two videos, it is not working, it is not there in reality. Yeah? It's just some idolized thing. And the D element is the most idolized thing. Yeah? So we're talking about derivation element. Since it was is that hard to find a D element yeah? uh, in reality. Element, I am, I struggled to bring you an example. Yeah? The closest thing I have I could come up with because it is then rather close to a really theoretically existing D element. This is a capacitor. Yeah? So it's an electrical example this time. So there is a capacitor yeah? with a certain capacity C. Yeah? And let's let's just let's just think about what it means. Yeah? So a capacitor usually has a voltage which can be changed. Yeah. There is a current running through this capacitor yeah. and the capacitor does have a certain charge. Yeah. So there are charges inside and the relationship between those charges and the, the actual, actual voltage at the, at the capacitor, this is given by the law, there is the capacity of the capacitor multiplied by the voltage of the capacitor is the current charge of the capacitor. And what is also the current charge, the total charge of the capacitor, capacitor is this current. Current is nothing more than moved charges. Uh, moving charges, and if I summarize all the charges which had already traveled into my capacitor, this must be the total charge of the capacitor, right? So this total charge of the capacitor is summarizing from the beginning to the current point in time of whatever traveled inside there with the help of the current. Putting those two things together, yeah, we will end up that this is the charge, yeah, and of course the right side will remain unchanged. That's it. Yeah. And now I do a derivation, derivation time derivation on both sides. Yeah. I'm allowed this, yeah? because both sides are equal, also the change rates are equal. Yeah? So this means here is an integration, a derivation will be removing each other. So here it's just the current, yeah? this C will not be touched, and this now is a derivation to time. Yeah? So the current actually running through in our capacitor, not, not through, yeah, in our capacitor. Yeah. This is the capacity multiplied by the change rate of the of the voltage. Okay. Now let's have again a look what it means if we if we look at this as some sort of transfer element. Yeah. So this is the transfer element. This time the transfer element is called D element. Yeah. But it of course has again the input, of course it has again the output. 
So there is XO, there is XI. Now we again want to map this. Yeah? The output shall be the current. And the input shall be the voltage. Now let's write this in a manner that it is commonly valid. XO from T equals, now this is a constant factor, so we'll call it simply KD, uh, derivation factor, multiplied by the input derivation. Uh, this is the transfer function or the transfer equation of a differential element. And like we've done it before, we're going to change to the Laplace area, uh, xi from s, xo from s, and this then is going to be the transfer function. Uh, let's bring this to Laplace area, xo from t will get xo from s, kd will remain unchanged, and now a derivation, and I'm simply assuming all, oh, at the beginning everything is zero, yeah? the amount is zero, the change rate is zero, the change rate of the change rate is zero, the change rate of the change rate of the change rate is zero, and so blah, blah, blah. So I can simply say multiplied by s and xi from s. And the same trick as before, if the output is the transfer function multiplied by the input, yeah, then this must be the transfer function. And indeed, the transfer function of a differential element is S multiplied by some factor. Formally, we can again change this S to J omega. What does it mean? Well, we have the frequency response. Let's have again a look what it means in our S complex number. So there is imaginary axis. There's the real axis. Where do we find this imaginary number in our drawing here? Well, it's on the imaginary axis because it's plus j. So up here, here we have omega kd. And if you want to draw it as imaginary number, here is the according arrow. And we immediately see here, this argument, the angle is always plus 90 degree. Okay. So what it means for the, for the absolute value? The absolute value, the length, is always omega multiplied by kd. Okay. And what it means for the argument? The argument is always plus 90 degree. Let's have again a look to the extremes. So we have a look at omega equals zero and we have a look at omega equals infinity. What does it mean for the, for the absolute value? Zero multiplied by something is zero. What does it mean in infinity? Infinite multiplied by something is infinite. So it's exactly the other way around, like an I element. And the argument, the angle, this is easy because it remains constant. So both arguments from J0 and J unlimited are plus 90 degree. Okay. This is how this is how this looks like. Yeah? This is a D element. Now let's have a look on the step response and on the frequency response in the Bode plot and in the time plot. Okay. So we are talking about 
And so we're talking about the T element. We said the transfer function of a T element is S multiplied by KD. Okay. So for the frequency response, I am just replacing S with J omega. Yeah. This is resulting in the absolute value equals omega kd. Yeah. And in the argument equals always to be 90 degree plus. Okay. Now let's have first a look again at the step response. And I've mentioned it already in the last video and I will mention it in the next video and in the next video that here where we are flat, frequency can be considered to be low or zero. Yeah, if we are a long time flat, it's zero. If we are changing, frequency can be considered as, as non-zero. And the faster we are changing, the frequency can be considered to be higher. Yeah? So if we are changing rapidly, like here, or instantly, the frequency jumps from zero to infinite. Yeah? So at zero, yeah? here we have frequency zero, zero input, absolute value zero. So here we will get no output. Okay? Then suddenly the frequency is unlimited. Unlimited frequency means absolute value unlimited. This means here we have a huge rise, huge going to extremes, to somewhere, total, maximum. Yeah? This is already a hint that this is not really working, yeah? that this is not existing. It goes to infinity. So this is not working yeah? in reality. Or the pure D element goes to infinity and then here it will remain zero again because nothing is changing anymore. This is the step response of a T element. See? Not working. However, the theoretical step response. Now let's have a look at the frequency response. Argument is pretty easy. Angle is pretty easy, always 90 degree. So we will remain here at 90 degree. And that's it. We'll write it down here. 90 degree. And now let's have again a, a look at this absolute value. If we want to have the absolute value 1, huh, where do we pinch this? Yeah? This is then called again the Durchtrittsfrequenz or pinching frequency omega d. So if omega d equals 1 divided by kd. In my example, kd equals 0 0.1. Example. So this is now our example, 0 0.1. Okay, so omega d is 10. Here we have omega d. Here we are reaching 1 by 1 divided by kd. Okay, here. If omega is now 10 times more, so not 10 but 100, the output is 10 times more also. If it's 100 times more, the output is 100 times more. If it's 1000 times more, the output is 1000 times more. If it's only a tenth, then the output is also a tenth. If it's only a hundredth part, then the output is on and so on. And we have again, like at the I element, we again have this relationship but now the other way around, double frequency, double output, triple frequency, triple output, 100 times the frequency, 100 times output, 255 times the frequency, 255 times the output. Okay, so this is the frequency response of a differential element. Yeah? Of course, if an element is reacting on the change rate, it, the output will be very high if something is changing very fast. I mean, it's not really a surprise. Huh? So, differ 
differential. I always say differential element, derivation element, of course, derivation element. Why I'm saying differential element? Because in, in German it's called differentielles or differential element. Yeah? Derivation, of course, it's derivation. Derivation element. This is the mouth behind. This is the step response and the frequency response. Yeah? And now we have it, our three pure elements. Next time we are going to learn about an element which helps us a little bit to adapt our elements to the reality. You know? That it's not that ideal. Next time we are going to talk about the delay element first order or PT1 element, which adds a little bit, you know, reaction time to those things. What is behind the PT1 element? With an example again, I'm going to explain in next video. For this time, thank you very much for listening. Goodbye.